And we're back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing our fourth segment. We're just going to be talking about the All-Star Game and a recap of it as well. Just going over, it was, of course, last night, always one of the nice events in baseball, the Midsummer Classic. I would argue baseball has the best All-Star Game as in basketball. They don't really try football. Nobody does anything, so they don't want to get hurt. And hockey, also kind of weird because there's so many substitutions and line changes as well. So baseball, people actually try. They take it with some kind of pride. And there are some changes that need to be uh, you know, handed to it, like making everyone wear their own uniform. I don't know why we ever got rid of that rule. The uniforms we had this year were absolutely disgusting. So please get them back to their own uniforms. It was iconic. I don't know why we changed that. But I digress. That's a conversation for a different day. So we'll be recapping the All-Star game, going over all the important moments, and just, yeah. So, obviously, starters for the game were Paul Skeens of the Pirates and then Corbin Burns of the Orioles. So, scoring would not open until the top of the third when Shohei Otani, of course, the Los Angeles Dodgers, would hit a three-run home run, scoring two of his NL West rivals, actually, Jerks and Profar and Catal Marte, would make a 3 nothing. A long, long home run by Otani. I mean, man, this guy lived up to the moment. I don't think we've given enough credit to Otani. The way that he has performed this year while Lily having Tommy John in the other elbow is insane. So, yeah, just an absolute beast, and what an incredible home run by Otani. Unfortunately for the NL, that would be the entire scoring of their game. So, the early, and that's it. So, yeah. Bottom of the third, the AO would get their first run to the board with a Juan Soto RBI double, scoring Marcus Semien and Stephen Kwan. So, great job by Soto, who, of course, lives up always at the moment. David Fry would end up tying the game up 3-3. Three to three. First all-star game for David Fry. What a season he's had. What an incredible story he's been. I've said this quite a few times on the show, but when he answered, you know, when they asked him, did you expect to be an all-star this year? He said, yeah, maybe a triple-A one, which shows you how little this was on his radar and just an incredible, incredible season by him and just an incredible story, which is, again, one of the reasons why baseball is such a great game because I don't think you'd have an all-star like him who came out of nowhere in any other sport in the game. I mean, basketball, it's basically just a pool of 20 to 25 guys every single year that make it. So as much as it's cool, it's nice for baseball to be able to have these kind of unexpected all-stars that you never really you know, expect to go into the game. David Fry would, of course, tie it up 3-3, three to three, scoring Juan Soto. Bottom of the fifth, Jaron Duran would take a two-run home run, scoring Anthony Santander, of course, Duran of the Red Sox, and would make it 5-3 to three AL and would end up winning the game for this team and would actually win all-star game MVP because of it. What an incredible season Jaron Duran has had. I talked about it a little bit before when I was going over the Red Sox portion of my power rankings, but, man, the way that he has broken out this year, become such an incredible piece of the Red Sox lineup, and now, of course, now is winning the All-Star Game MVP in his, in his home state of Texas. is just really, truly incredible. I mean, what a season he's had, becoming a huge contributor for this, for this Red Sox team and is becoming really a fantastic, fantastic player for them. I mean... He's continuing to do it on the biggest stage, and now for this All-Star game. What a, who would have thought, if I told you before the year, that Jaron Duran would win an All-Star game MVP? I don't think anyone. And with all the star power here, the fact that he was able to stand out and win this MVP is really, really incredible. So props to him. So going over the box score now, the starters, of course, were Cattell Marte, Shohei Otani, Trey Turner, Bryce Harper, William Contreras, Christian Yelich, Alec Bohm. Teoscar Hernandez and Jerks and Profar for the National League. Pitch hitting for them, we had Ryan McMahon in the game, Marcel Azuna, C.J. Abrams, Healy Ramos, Will Smith, Freddie Freeman, Pete Alonso, Ellie De La Cruz, Jackson Merlin, Brian Reynolds. For the AL, you had, of course, the starting lineup, Stephen Kwan, Gunnar Henderson, Juan Soto, Aaron Judge, Yoran Alvarez, uh, Jose Ramirez, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Adley Rutschman, and Marcus Semien. Pinch hitting for them would be Riley Green, Corey Seager, Bobby Witt Jr., Anthony Santander, Jaron Duran, of course, David Fry, of course, Willie Castro, Isaac Perez, Josh Naylor, Salvador Perez, and Jordan Westberg. Of course, all these guys did a pretty good job, and yeah. So going over the pitchers now, we had for the NL All-Stars, of course, Paul Skeens starting, who I believe was the correct choice. Do you want to market the game? Make Skeens the All-Star game starter. I think it's pretty clear he's one of the biggest stars in the league already as a rookie. Fantastic, fantastic decision by MLB and by Tori Lovello as well. He went one inning pitch, giving up no hits, no run runs. Did give up a walk for Juan Soto, but was able to strike out Stephen Kwan. Was able to um, was able to also get out um, Gunnar Henderson as well. Walked walked Juan Soto, but did get out Aaron Judge in one pitch. So fantastic job by him. I mean, continues to shine. 
I mean, no stage is big for him. It's really, really incredible. After that, you, of course, had Max Reed in the game. Logan Webb, who gave up three earned runs, which was unfortunate for him, obviously. A first-time All-Star, so it did not go great. But overall, um, again, I don't really know how he had made an All-Star team before this. He's just a player that is absolutely incredible, in my opinion. And, yeah, overall, I don't understand why he's only made one All-Star game. So, after that, we have Shota Managa, who went an inning. Hunter Green, who also gave up two runs, which was rough. Christopher Sanchez, Renato Lopez, Robert Torres, Matt Strom, Tanner Scott, and Jeff Hoffman would all not give up a run. So at least those guys were good as well. For the American League, you of course had Corbin Burns on the mounds, who gave up only one hit and would walk someone, but did not give up any runs. So props to him. Tarek Skubal also after him, who gave up no runs. Tanner Houck gave up three and runs, which of course was unfortunate for him, the first time All-Star in his home state of Texas as well. Gary Crochet, no runs. Mason Miller, no runs. Struck out two, including Otani. Mason Miller's insane. Cole Reagans was fantastic in back in his home ball, back in his uh, former home ballpark of Kansas City, uh, Texas, not Kansas City. His Kansas City teammate Seth Lugo was next in, his, next in his first All-Star game, giving up two hits but no one runs. As a Mets fan, so happy for Lugo to be able to be an All-Star, not only as not only an all-star, but as a starter as well. The way that he has really shown that he deserves to be an all-star these past few years has been really incredible. Yeah, props to him. Kirby Yates has been uh, was fantastic as well, giving up no run runs in his home ballpark. And Emmanuel Classe got the save as well. So, yeah. Fantastic job by the AL All-Stars. And they ended up winning this game 5-3. to three. Another win by them. And they've continued to be these... Um, they continue to dominate this all-star game. So... Yeah, really good job by them, and yeah, really, really fantastic game to watch. It was nice seeing all these stars be able to be in one place and interact with each other, play, but also have fun as well. And I love the All-Star game as a baseball fan. Always fun to see the Midsummer Classic, and yeah, it was a really great time watching. So yeah, that was our fourth segment here, talking about the All-Star game and just recapping it. Going on to our fifth and final segment here, which is going to be talking about Tommy Pham and some trade rumors involving him of the White Sox, of course going over that and we'll see you after the break so thanks and bye there we go